Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture series on Renewable Energy Engineering. I am Nilay Trinidhi, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. We are starting new chapter named Ocean Energy. So let us start with an introduction. Now, as you all know, ocean covers nearly 70% of Earth area. All the oceans are connected with each other. The oceans of the earth serves many functions, especially affecting the weather and the temperature. Oceans of the earth have practically unlimited energy. The energy from the ocean can be harvested in three different ways, like ocean thermal energy conversion, tidal energy and wave energy. Now, ocean thermal energy conversion method is an indirect method of using solar energy. The sea water system acts as a collector system from the solar heat. The upper layer of the sea water warms quickly than the lower level. Okay? And the difference between the temperature is nearly 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. So, we will use the temperature difference. Now, if we study the ocean, it has nearly seven energy resources like ocean thermal energy, ocean tidal energy, ocean geothermal energy, ocean wave energy, ocean chemical energy, ocean biomass energy and ocean salinity gradient energy. So let us explain one by one for the better understanding. So if we study the ocean thermal energy, it refers to the thermal energy available from the ocean. The temperature absorbed by the ocean water from the solar radiations. It means the upper layer gets heated. In this, the warm surface ocean water allowed to flow through the heat exchanger. Now this heat exchanger convert the warm surface water to steam. Now steam drives the steam turbine and generator which is coupled with the turbine which generates the electricity. The cold water from the deep sea is used to condense the steam in the condenser. So this is the part of the thermal energy, ocean thermal energy. Now let us see the ocean tidal energy. Now, tides in the ocean are due to the combined gravitational force of moon, the sun on the earth. There is periodic rise and fall of a sea water level during high tides and low tides. This difference in the water level is about 10 meter and more can be used to operate the turbine which in turn generates the electricity. There are two types of ocean tidal power plants like single basin power plant and double basin power plants. Now this is for the tidal energy. Now let us understand the ocean geothermal energy. Uh, I think you all know about the geothermal. So it refers to the geothermal energy available from offshore geothermal fields. By constructing a deep well, such a geothermal energy can be brought to the surface of the earth. This energy will be converted to electrical energy in the power plants. So this is for the geothermal energy. We are using the energy of the inside earth, geothermal. It means inside the earth we are using this. Okay, now let us see the ocean wave energy. Ocean waves are generated due to the rotation of the earth and winds as we have already discussed in our wind energy chapter over the ocean surface. Now waves has an interval of 4 to 12 seconds and peak up to 10 meter. So this can also be used for producing the electricity. Now let us see the ocean chemical energy. It refers to the chemical energy in the ocean water. Okay. Now, ocean water contains hydrogen, oxygen and sodium etc. So it is having some chemical reaction takes place between it. So this chemical energy can be converted into electrical energy by using fewer cells. Now, 
Let us see the biomass energy of the ocean. Yes, ocean is also contain lots more biomass. So it refers to the energy contained in the organic matter form. Ocean like vegetation, marine animals and microorganisms etc. Now, if you see in this diagram of ocean salinity gradient energy, so just see this diagram, it refers to the one type of chemical energy. When saline water is separated from the fresh water, an electrical potential is developed between the electrodes. So these are all the seven different types. Now let us study about the advantages and limitations of the ocean energy. So first of all, let us check the advantages. Ocean energy is a free and renewable source of energy until and unless there is a water on this land. Okay. Now it is relatively pollution free. Obviously we are using the ocean as a temperature gradient only. So it does not create any kind of pollution. It is good alternative of other conventional power plants. Now limitation. Now obviously it has lots more limitations. It is having very low energy density. Second limitation is ocean wave is corrosive. Okay, so here now as you see it here in ocean water, the material will fail due to the water quality. As you know, it is having the sal uh, it is having the salty water inside the uh, ocean, so the material may corrode. Now, let us understand the ocean thermal energy conversion system. So, as you see in this diagram, ocean thermal energy conversion is a way to generate electricity using the temperature difference of a sea water at different levels. Okay, now let us see the principle of OTIC. So, the sea water gets heated naturally in the top layer due to the solar radiations and bottom remain at a cooler temperature. Now, there is the temperature difference. So the OTEC system utilizes the temperature difference between water at the surface and at the lower level of the ocean. So now, what is T1? We can uh, say that T1 is the temperature of a warm water, warm ocean water. Now T2 is the temperature of cold deep ocean water. Delta T, it is considered as, considered as temperature difference. So here we can find out the efficiency as T1 minus T2 by T1. Now what is T1 minus T2? It is delta T. So delta T by T1. Okay. Now here temperature T1 ranges between 24 to 27 degree and temperature T2 ranges from 4 to 6 degrees. So here let us have the types of OTEC system. There are basically three types of OTEC system. One is open cycle. Second one is closed cycle and third is the hybrid cycle. Now let us explain first the open cycle OTEC system. So here as you see in this diagram, the warm surface sea water is a gasifier. Okay and then evaporated in a flash evaporator under the vacuum. Then by producing low pressure steam. Right? Now the steam is generated in the evaporator and is admitted into the steam turbine. Obviously, steam in the evaporator which is generated enter into the steam turbine. Now, remaining water from the evaporator is discharged into the sea. Now, steam is expanded in the steam turbine and converts into the heat and uh, converts the steam's heat energy into the mechanical energy. Now, turbine is uh, coupled with the generator produces the electricity. Exhaust steam from the turbine is condensed in direct contact type condenser. Cold water from the deep sea is used to condense the steam in the condenser. Now energy produced is obviously low because of the small temperature difference between the warm as well as cold water of the sea. Now let us check what are the limitations of open cycle OTEC plant. So here a very large flow of water required. Size of the turbine is physically large, should be very large. Overall cost of the plant is high. Sea water is corrosive and equipment may be corroded. 
The civil work of the open cycle work plant is costly and difficult and generation cost of the electric electrical energy is also very high. So here if you see this you can understand that the basic thermal energy system or the basic cycle is used okay and the limitation are only due to the water quality of the ocean okay so student thank you all of you for watching this video if you have any query you can contact me thank you